Hey, and welcome to the latest video blog. I mentioned it in the last video blog, and I want to do it again. There's a program going right across the country. It's called Cart Start with a K, Cart Start. And this is a program to get young people into a go-kart to learn the basics of steering, accelerating, and braking in a very controlled environment. And uh, it's going starting in the end of June in British Columbia and then heading east. And it's sponsored by Toyota. And uh, what you do is you go to kartstart.ca and you enter to sign up. There's limited numbers across the country. Uh, here's a deal, though. If you put in the promo code Zach, Z-A-C-K, you get $20 off. That makes the price only $59. So you get the go-karting experience in the morning, you get lunch, and then the parents or the grandparents, whoever's going to take the kid to the event, gets to test drive the Toyota products and also experience the safety features of the Star Safety System from Toyota. So this is a great thing that they're doing. My buddy Russ Bond is the one that is putting it on and taking this cavalcade of carts and cars right across the country. Get this for your kid and, and go and have some fun. It might be a good father. Father's Day gift for somebody too, for a, a father and son or daughter to go and do it. All right, the first question comes from Dimitri uh, Barisov. It says, thanks for your reviews. Could you please clarify in one thing I hear very often? A car is built on the same platform as another car. In the review you mentioned, the Honda CRV is sharing the same platform with the Honda Civic. Uh, what does this mean? I compared the vehicle and they're very different. All the dimensions, the, the wheelbase, the track, that's the wheel side to side are different. Engine and transmission are different. Which platform are you talking about? Thanks a lot. Well, we use that a lot in car reviews. This shares the same platform with another vehicle. And what we're basically saying is, um, it's kind of hard to describe. So yes, you can have different wheelbases and different tracks, but it could still be built off the same underlying architecture. And that's what a lot of car companies do is they build a small car architecture, a midsize and a large. And sometimes the midsize is just a bigger version of the small car platform. Here's one perfect example. Uh, the Dodge Dart is built on the same platform as the Alfa Romeo Giulietta. Then the Dodge Dart was lengthened and that turned into the Chrysler 200. The Dodge Dart platform, once again, that comes from the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, that Dodge Dart platform uh, was stretched into the Chrysler and also made into the Jeep Cherokee. So you can take a platform and modify it to use it for many different vehicles. And really what it comes down to is the tooling and the touch points of the suspension and the way everything bolts on to that platform will be similar. So when they make a platform, they're also using the, the machinery to put the vehicle together is going to be similar. The way the suspension bolts onto that platform, the way everything works together is going to be common. And we're starting to see that, for example, uh, the Volkswagen Golf that we seem to get endless questions about here on this video blog, the new seventh generation Volkswagen Golf platform is called MQB. They are going to use that platform and modify it to develop 22 different products. So that's what it is. Sure, you can go and check the wheelbase, the track, the length of the vehicle, and they could all be different, but underneath all those touch points and the way it's put together is based on the same platform. Hopefully that explains it. Kevin Foe says, Hey Zach, I'm currently looking at an affordable sports coupe. I need your help. At first thought, uh, I first thought I'd be satisfied with the Scion FRS. However, on the same day, I also went to test drive the Hyundai Genesis Coupe 3.8 with the automatic. And is amazed, he says it has 370 horsepower, but I checked online. It's uh, three, where is it? 348 horsepower for the Hyundai Genesis with the V6. Um, I just don't quite get like why that Honda Genesis has more horsepower than the BMW 3 Series, which I'm also considering. The more research, the more I become undecided. That's often the case. The more you research looking up a car, the more you don't know what you're gonna pick. Um, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. I'm a huge fan, watch all your videos, keep up the good work. Now, I don't wanna throw that Hyundai Genesis Coupe under the bus, but when I drove it with the V6 engine, I, I came away thinking to myself, there's no way that this car has 348 horsepower. It just doesn't feel like it. But often you have to look at the specifications for where the peak horsepower is and where the peak torque is. So you go to the website, you look up specifications, and what you want to see is an engine that has good torque and horsepower in the mid range and the high range. If you have all of your horsepower right at the very 
high, high RPM. That means you have to rev the snot out of the engine to get that maximum horsepower. Same thing for torque. If torque is in a very limited band, it's not going to be that useful. And that's why when you drive a BMW uh, 335 compared to the Hyundai Genesis Coupe, the BMW is rated at only 300 horsepower, but it feels like it has more power and more torque and more usable power than the Hyundai Genesis. Dollar for dollar, pound for pound, that Scion is a hell of a car. Um, it's not going to have the same kind of grunt as a, a, a V6 equipped Hyundai Genesis or an inline six equipped BMW, but that's where you come into play. You have to learn how to manage the power of the engine to get the most out of it in a very lightweight, rear wheel drive, fun to drive platform, and uh, you can go out and have some fun. All right, the next question comes from Ryan Douglas. He says, we have a 2011 Acadia utility for running the kids around, uh, but we hate it. What are you gonna do? I most recently was driving a Golf R and absolutely loved it. <laughs> awesome car to run around town. Our re wife refuses to drive the Acadia anymore. So we sold the Golf R, why would you do that? And we bought a 2015 BMW X3 to provide manageable utility and he inherited the Acadia. Why would you do that? <laughs> so you get rid of the Golf R, your wife gets a brand new X3 and you're driving the old Acadia. That's no fun. Um, anyway, not quite the Golf R. Uh, so we're looking for something, a utility that has a higher seating position and um, more comfortable because the guy's six, point, six feet two inches tall. What new vehicle is fun to drive has a sporty experience. Never had a diesel, but like the idea of all the torque and reasonable economy. My choices are Audi Q5 TDI, Volkswagen Touareg TDI, Audi SQ5, and he says, I'm only considering it because I saw your review. Pricing is similar, generally similar performance possibility. Realize that TDI has different overall experience. Looking for your insight. So he used to drive a Golf R. He wants a utility that has a lot of fun. Well, here's the thing. The Audi Q5 and the Volkswagen Touareg TDI use the same engine. It has 428 foot-pounds of torque, so the Audi Q5 is going to be smaller with all that torque. It's going to be a lot of fun to drive. But you know what? They both have a nice high seating position. I like the Touareg for the size, uh, and you're going from a big three-row SUV down to a smaller vehicle, so the Touareg might be the winner on size. But if it was me, and you had a Golf R, the Audi SQ5, if you can afford it, is a bomb. I actually prefer it over the Macan, not in the handling department, but the power department. I think it is the best bang for the buck right now if you're looking for a performance SUV. If you don't want to spend the extra money on the fuel, then get the TDI because it has tons of torque. So those are three very good choices and it really comes down to which one you like and which one you can afford. All right, I think... Um Oh, one more here it is. Uh, LaRob says, I like your TV show and follow your reviews on uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm a few months away from purchasing a new car, 53 years old. I like all wheel drive. Uh, two distinct vehicles I'm looking at, a manual Subaru Forester with a two and a half liter and a Volkswagen Golf. This is with manual transmission. In your opinion, is Subaru's viscous coupling all wheel drive sister system better than the Haldex 5? And uh, what are the differences? Which is more ro robust and reliable? Uh, I think he's thinking about getting the Volkswagen Golf Sport Wagon. It's going to come with the four motion and the manual transmission next year. Um, all right, here's the thing about the Subaru. Subaru is known for their symmetrical all-wheel drive system, all right? Shifting powers to the wheels that have grip away from those that don't. You've all seen the ads about that. But here's the one thing. When you get uh, the Subaru Forester with the manual transmission. You are locking the torque from the engine 50-50 front to back. So the ability for that all-wheel drive system to move around is limited because of the manual transmission. I don't know if that's the same case with the Golf with the manual transmission. That might be one of the reasons why an automatic might be a better choice because you have that infinite amount of movement in the transmission uh, to make things uh, work for you. If the manual transmission is gonna limit the amount of torque that can shift front to back to 50-50. So um, 
the Golf Sport Wagon, I'm not sure what the system is going to be like with manual transmission. Very small percentage of people will buy it with that. Uh, but uh, there's your answer, at least for the Subaru for now. That's all the time I have. If you want to get a question through to me, go to Motormouth Canada. That's my Facebook page. And like it for sure. And also get your questions in. Um, I might be a little scatterbrained today. I flew back from China. I was in China for three days and flew back. And my brain's still a little fried and jet lagged and discombobulated. But there you go. Hopefully I answered your question. Get yours in. If I didn't, I'll speak to you soon.